Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Dumbass of the day now brought to you by Dwight Peterson's Low Bed Services. You need to get low. You need Peterson's Low Bed Services. Peterson'sLowBed.com. How low can you go? <laughs> if you think it's too big or too awkward to haul, you need to get low. I think, I think that's the actual uh, sound that the trailer makes. If you're, you know, you have to do it uh, slowly, you know, because you have to make sure you can get underneath that bridge. Yeah. Go skeet, skeet, skeet. Come on, you gotta put a little heart into it. Skeet, skeet, skeet. <laughs> no. Ah, skeet, 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 skeet. Ah, skeet, 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 skeet. Give Dwight a call, 805-466-3806, or go to petersonlobed.com. How pathetic can some Get people low. be? If you work in a drive-thru, uh, it's, it's terrible because people talk down to you all day. They just treat you like you're stupid because you work in a drive-thru, and you, you, you're clearly a dumb person. You can't do anything else with your life. You're dumb. You're, you're an idiot, right? And, like, you can be as nice as can be to these people. Like, I was very polite when I worked in the drive-thru. I'd be like, hey, here's your food. Have a great day. And they'd be like, thanks, idiot. Good luck with your baby. And I'm like, I don't... <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have a baby. I don't know what that means. But it was the worst when, like, you would make a mistake in a drive through People will lose their minds. It's insane how crazy they will go. Even when that mistake isn't your fault at all, right? Like, I'm working at a drive through one time, and a guy comes through. He orders his food, pulls up to the window, pays for it, and then drives away without his food. Okay? <laughs> That is clearly not my fault, right? Like, I made no implication the transaction was over. I was like, hey, buddy, go and take off now. No, I didn't say anything. He just decided it was his time to go and went, right? It's not over. I know you're very excited about that part, but it's not over. Fifteen minutes later, he comes back through the drive-thru, like, very angry at me, and he pulls up the window like, hey, I did not get my food. I was like, I know. He just left, buddy. Like, I thought it was funny, you know? But he was really upset, like it was my fault or something. He was like, how come you didn't, like, run after me or chase me down? I was like, oh, because I don't care enough to do that, right? Like, I work in a drive-thru. I clearly don't even care enough to chase my dreams. You know, what do you want from me right now? Yeah. Good luck with your baby, idiot. Have fun. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOZ. So In-N-Out Burger is in uh, seven states, and uh, it is it is now in Colorado. In Colorado, the seventh state. That is the seventh state in which uh, In-N-Out is there. There's In-N-Outs in Oregon. Yeah, Nevada, which is, which is weird. Arizona, of course, Texas, California too. California, uh, and all these different places. So, anyways, Utah. Now there's one in Calif- in, in Colorado, in Aurora, Colorado, to be exactly. They opened a couple of different ones, and they both had 12-hour late waits. 12 hours to get a burger, a, ha- a fast food burger. All right, talk about fast food. At some point, <laughs> police officers were trying to manage the traffic because the line was two miles long. And they said, sir, at this point, it is going to be 14 hours before you get through the drive-thru, and the in and out will be closed. You might as well just come back another day. Or go to another place that doesn't have a Oh, no, I'm going to take it out, man. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to give me some of that in and out. I absolutely love you guys. I appreciate your intelligence. You both are so articulate, and, and, and I do appreciate your intelligence. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you for coming. Yeah, because we appreciate that, the call. It's just time. common sense at that point. It's just, it's, it's, listen. One night I got trapped, and this is the problem with the, with the fast food drive through line, is you get trapped. You get trapped in it, like the you can't leave. This is your life now. The maze that they turn that parking lot into at, or in a Royal Grande. It's ridiculous. The minute you pull into that drive through line, and you're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I, I don't want this. I don't want this. I can't. Then all of a sudden somebody comes behind you, and you're like, <gasps> I'm you stuck. Have to, what are you gonna drive through barriers? For an hour. They need an out clause. That's why you need a four-wheel drive truck, Jeff. Let's go over curbs. Yeah, but... (laughs) 
I don't know. In, in this, in this, I guarantee you. Climate. That one time, if you had a four wheel drive truck, you'd be like, man, I'm telling you, there is something about four wheel drive. So trucks. that's why Californians need four wheel drives to get out of the in and to out. To escape uh, the <laughs> in and out line. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, you finally have justified it to me. You've got to get out. There's going to be at one point in your life when you get in an in and out line that is over an hour long, and you're like, I need to get out of this line quickly. My wife. I don't have four wheel drive. I'm screwed. She likes the in and out. She can't have the bun because of the gluten thing. So they do a good job wrapping it in lettuce call it protein style we've talked about that Whatever. everybody knows yeah. but you know the thing is um that she always wants to go there and she's like can you go i live across the street from that in and out by the way on the other side of the freeway the it takes one? me it takes me literally four minutes to drive over there my pants are a little tight and then 30 <laughs> minutes to wait in that line 30 Four minutes to drive, 30 minutes to wait in the line. It's I'm gone almost 45 minutes just to get her a hamburger. Well, that's why you got to get in the uh, podcast, specifically Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on Apple Podcasts. Mm, yeah, that's true. I do use my time in the in and out. Oh, to listen to a podcast? <laughs> drive kill the through time. in Royal Grande to listen to podcasts. <laughs> I straight up do. I honestly kind of enjoy doing that a little bit, yeah. you know? You sit there, you kind of watch the people that you're uh, in line with. I hate wonder it. Wonder about their lives a little bit. I like the burger. Hate the line. Hate the wait. I don't think the burger, burger's worth the wait. And I, I think the burger's just fine. It's a good burger, but it's not, yeah, it's not definitely stellar. Definitely not worth the Colorado wait. 60,000 burgers is what they estimated they sold the first day. How do you keep 60? I mean, how, what does 60,000 burgers look like? You know, they never freeze their meat. Just keep a truck parked there, I, I guess. I can't even imagine 60,000 patties in yeah. a freezer. That's what I'm saying. It's not a freezer, though, because they don't Happy freeze cows. their meat. Come from California. Yeah. Mm. They don't freeze their meat. It's just in a refrigerator. So you got to keep it fresh, which means it's got to be even harder to get, right? Because frozen stuff, you know, you can move around in frozen trucks. Fresh stuff, it's got to be fresh. fresh Does it fresh, seem fresh. as if, though, we are eating more burgers now than we've ever eaten at any time in our life? And I'm talking about Not the, me. the collective we society. It seems as if though well, now there's meatless burgers. Oh, that's true. But I I think you you are right though, because especially because you know the population has been growing and growing and growing. So yeah, you know, it would make sense that the hamburger consumption rate is the same as the growth of population. Yeah. Anybody who would wait in line for twelve or fourteen hours in a line two miles long. Yeah, you've earned it. Congratulations. You're Jeff and Jeremy. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOZ. Don't be a dummy when it comes to your landscape supplies. Go to Peterson Ucart on Gusta Road, just north of Quickie Car Wash in Atascadero. We love you, car. You stay. Um, new study says video games are good for you. Whoop! Yeah, you're a big video game player. Um, Jeff, you play the games anymore on your phone or anything? No, um, I think it'll probably start. The kids are the kids are starting to get into that kind of thing. The other night, um, I was playing some app based uh, children's game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I kind of got into it because my son can't. Uh, def- he can't defeat the Krang um, when it comes to the New York City level, so I'll jump in and I'll I'll defeat the Krang for him, and then and then uh, I, I bounce out, and then he's like, "Okay, thanks, Dad," and then he takes off with his with his Kindle and he tries to go on to the next level. I don't know. I just he just has a tough time with the New York City level. See, for me, playing video games when I played was a very solo experience. You know, we didn't have the headsets and all that. You can communicate with people. Uh, nowadays, I know that's a big thing. Uh, Cameron, do you have you ever heard of Planet versus Zombies Battle for the Neighbor Neighborville? Plant, plants versus zombies. Yeah, plants. 
What did I say? Planets? Planets. Sorry. Sorry. You did say planets. Yeah. I, I don't have my glasses um, on. Because I think the planet would have been. I, I've heard of Plants vs. Zombies. I haven't heard of that specific game. Animal Crossings, say. New Horizons. Have you heard of yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. My, oh, my God. My girlfriend has uh, probably over 100, 150 hours in Animal Crossing. What is Animal Crossing? Explain it to us real quick. Um, it is a little, like, town management game. You, uh, it, The premise is that, like... It has special events tied to specific days, and you're supposed to get really attached to the villagers, and you build your own little little village. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like somebody that runs a marketing and events company. Are games literally preparing us for life now? <laughs> are, are, oh, she she. I'm getting I'm getting breaking news. She has 250 hours in, or sorry, 206 65 hours. And what does that? How big is the village? Is it like the size of Manhattan now, or what? <laughs> I, you know, it's it's um they uh they give you a limit, hmm. so it's yeah, but I have seen it and it's very beautiful. And how does this affect you socially? Because it says during for this study, it makes people happier because of the social interaction that you get out of it. She um see she plays with her uh with her sisters a lot, oh, okay. so she, you know they um they will like trade items and. Uh, I know who. Sounds like fantasy football. Yeah. No. Okay. What this says: games, video games lower your blood pressure. Fantasy football raises your blood pressure. (laughs) Yeah. See, that's the difference. Okay. I I got a question. How is fantasy football played? Because in my head, it is like essentially like a like a a Dungeons and Dragons Warhammer based game. Of like, oh yeah, my guy's gonna make a toss, and there's like a percentage chance on whether he'll catch it or not. Well, very basically, you have all the teams in the NFL, and then you form your own team with uh, players that make up a football team. So you have a quarterback, running backs, uh, wide receivers, tight ends. You have a defense. You have a kicker, and so you can pick them from any team. And you have a draft, and you want to get the best players because the more points they score, the more points you score. And you take your team, and it plays like, for example, my team will play Jeff's team. And beat them severely. <laughs> that was week one. That was week one. Oh, it was week one, yeah. We'll see how it shakes up here. Yeah, uh, but we may playoffs. see each other in the playoffs. Are you going to make the playoffs? I don't know. I, I got I to gotta do some work. But on top of it, we all throw in 100 bucks, so we've got $1,000 for first place. So, you know, it's, there's actually something that is tangible that you're, you're trying to win. Um, so Yeah, I don't know if I'd do this if there's no money in t- attached. That's ridiculous. It wouldn't be. I as can't fun. even imagine spending like, okay, okay. For reference, like my the graphics card in my computer was four hundred dollars, but that's like a flat fee that I pay. I can't imagine paying that much for every game. No, no, no. It's a hundred dollars a year. It's just for the season. So we pay it in August and we get paid out in February. So you get oh, you know, seventeen weeks of enjoyment. My God, my God. What's it break down to a week? Then you do the math once seven dollars yeah, a week. Yeah, it's like it's like, so you get what thirteen weeks? Yeah, it's like seven bucks a week. Oh yeah, I guess for entertainment. Sense. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's fair. Yeah. I guess that's all right. That's better than compared to big scary number. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's really not that much. It sounds like a lot when you say I'm going to play a hundred bucks. Well, yeah, because so. there's fourteen people that play it, so it's a thousand bucks when you know it's, it's the aggregate. But you also have to like to gamble. You know, we like to gamble. <laughs> yeah, not that much though. I mean, this is not like a huge buy-in. No, no, but it's not. But I mean, it's still the the idea of winning money. Like I said it's fun. like seven dollars a week. Yeah, and I think it's stressful. But um, and it consumes a lot of my time. And my wife's like, "You're always on your phone." I'm like, "Well, I'm just doing some research." Hey, got to do that recognizance. <laughs> but playing video games, all right. The next time somebody tells you you're wasting your time, that's not true. You're being a, you're becoming a happier person person and living a much more happy life. Do you watch a show called Euphoria, Cameron? It's on HBO. No. I haven't seen it either. It's listed online as a. I think it said it was a teen thriller. Um, I don't know what it's about, but there's this actor. His name's Lucas Cage. Um, 
he was auditioning for um, another movie with the director. Um, I believe the director's name, or I think it's the director from the Kingsman and the X-Men. His name's Matthew Vaughn um, because he's unnamed in this transition, but people were able to deduce who who it was based on the sound of his voice and the subject matter in which um, this Lucas Cage pointed this out on uh, Twitter. He put this on Twitter, and this is a transmission between him and the director, but the director did not know his mic was live, and the guy that was applying for, or, or I guess not applying for the job, but um, a, auditioning for the part was off camera, so he was talking to somebody at his house. The director was talking to somebody at his house about his apartment. These poor people live in these tiny apartments. Like I'm looking at his, you know, background, and he's got his TV and and you know. Yeah, I'm muted. I know it's the apartment. That's why give me this job so I can get a better one. All right. <laughs> I wish everyone could see his face too, because when he says it, he like scrunches up. And he's like. <sighs> Oh my god, I, I need to find this video. I want to see it. Um, <laughs> ready? Oh my god, I'm so, so sorry. No, it's just totally... Li- listen, I'm living, I'm, in a, so sorry. I'm living in a 4 by 4 box. It's fine. Just give me the job and we'll be no, fine. I, I'm more... <laughs> Just give me the job. Yeah, he's smart. He's like, all right, now I got him. Now yeah. he feels bad. Well, now he's got to give me the job. He blasted it out on, on the internet now. I don't know if that's going to work <laughs> for his prospects of getting that job. Oh, that is so funny. uh, If you don't want this on Twitter, uh, give me the job. Um, But, yeah. So, uh. He just looks like he's in, uh, now I'm seeing it. It looks like he's just in a bedroom. I mean, you can't really tell, but he must already know it's his apartment, but. How uh, mighty of the, uh, of the big time director to talk down to the, uh, to the people that are trying out for the job. Don't you have to give this kid a job now? Don't you? He's already an actor. He's already starred in this thing called Euphoria on HBO. I mean, you know, it's not like he doesn't have work. These poor people live in these tiny apartments. I mean, come on. And the pompous Britishness of of every of all of it. And it, this guy's a director. How did, how does he not know like hot mics? Exactly. How does he not exactly? That's where that's where I have a trouble with this. It's like it's like it should be inherently built into everything that he does in life that especially you know when he's in work mode which he should have been when he's you know hearing auditions that okay let me check and see if the mic's on i do it in my zoom meetings because of our job and well, it's I, right on the screen i'm it, always looking mic- <laughs> i'm constantly looking to see okay is the mic on well i just assume it's on all the time but you know you got to realize we work in a profession where these things we talk into you know and we probably should do you know you always treat it like it's on even though these poor people live in these tiny apartments like i'm looking at his you know background and he's got his tv and <laughs> and you know yeah i'm muted i know it's the apartment that's why give me this job so i can get a better one all right <laughs> so. His apartment looks fine. <laughs> no, it's it does. A, it, his it apartment like is so apartment. much nicer than what I'm compared to of guys like these. Yeah, I know. I know that's nicer than any of the apartments I lived in when I was in my 20s. So uh, it looks like he's doing okay or just as nice. So um, yeah, hopefully he gets the job. Well, apparently uh, Matthew Vaughn is, is accustomed to much nicer digs than that of the uh, lowly actor. This is British. It's just the British. They always are the best. The best at everything, aren't they? The best? Yes, they think they're the best. Oh, these actors, I feel so bad for them. I'm looking at this <laughs> t- tiny TV and this tiny apartment. It definitely sounds that pompous. I mean, it's like, dude, it shut up. pretty pompous. Up. Shut up. It's, it's just the, the way guy. they talk. Yes, we get it, okay? You're the director and everybody else works for you and they're your lemmings. But, come on. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.